Hey guys, Malcolm Moore here. Thank you for joining me. It is the end of the season, which means the snow is melting rapidly and that is giving us these soft, slushy conditions. Now riding slush can be really good fun on a snowboard, but if you don't have the right technique or just the right idea of what kind of turns you're trying to make, it can be really difficult and you'll end up having a miserable time. Let's take some turns and let's get into this tutorial. Super soft, thick, heavy, soupy slash. Now, I mentioned in the intro that, yeah, you wanna have good technique, but you wanna have the right tactics as well. And what I mean by that is that you're making the right choices. And simply put, you just need to visualize a nice smooth S-shaped turn, okay? And you wanna always be following the nose of your board. That might sound quite simple and you might think, you're doing that anyway. But if you're making skidded turns, you're essentially turning the board sideways, therefore you're not following the nose. And the reason that whilst you can get away with that on a nice smooth groomed piece, you don't wanna be doing that in the slush is because when you ride slush, you get this quite unique feeling. Let me just stand up here and put some pressure through my board. So I'm literally just standing on my board there. Let me just pull pull back away from that. You can see underneath the board, I've moved all the snow. I've compressed it into a platform. And that's why people say it's a bit like surfing when you're riding slush, because it's less that you're balanced on your edge. You're more on the base of your board, compressing the snow underneath you and building a platform. And that's really fun to ride. And this platform, it actually gives you grip and kind of pushes back against you as you're riding down the slope. But it only works if you're following the nose of the board. If I start skidding, the board going sideways, you hop off that platform. And you see a lot of people, when they start riding slush, they start juddering and bouncing in this slushy snow. And it's because they're not holding their line. They're not traversing the board across, following the nose that they're essentially falling out of that platform that they've built for themselves and then doing that down the piste. So let's get on to what you need to do to be able to hold that line and make those smooth S shapes down the slope. <laughs> Look, you can actually see what happens if you do end up skidding, if you do end up side slipping, you kind of push all this snow down and then you kind of fall off the top of it. So what do we need to do to get out of this skidded turn into a clean traverse when following the nose of your board. Well, <laughs> it's just gonna come down to having good technique and I don't wanna go over too much of that in this video, but if you're doing things like counter rotating, like there, you're gonna push the board into a skid. So you wanna make sure you're not doing that. You want to be able to move laterally, laterally that is inclining into the slope to increase the edge angle of your board and also playing with the vertical movements, a little bit of up and down, sinking down low onto your edge and then standing up to release the pressure at the end of the edge change or dropping down and doing a down and weighted turn. Both of those are gonna work in the slush. But to just get the basics right, to be able to create that smooth S shape, one of the best things you can do is actually learn to carve. I'll link my sort of basics of eight steps to getting towards carving video, or nine steps, can't remember how many it was, up in the top there. So give that a watch. But sometimes, honestly, just visualizing that S-shaped turn. I teach a lot of people that are skidding and I just say, hey, rather than skidding at the end of the turn, just traverse across the, across the slope, look out over your leading shoulder, and suddenly that's, you know, sometimes the only input they need to start creating these turns. And when you make those turns, once you are leaving that smooth S-shape in the snow, like this, 
Such a nice feeling because of the snow moving underneath you. I kind of skidded that last one out there just to come to a stop. But let me try and create this platform, put the camera behind. You can see it really leaves a trace, a track in the snow behind you that you can push out against and it gives you rebound from one turn to the other. As soon as you go into a skid, let me just get over the top of this roller, as soon as I turn the board sideways, oh, you really end up feeling all the little bumps underneath you rather than the nose of your board softening and squishing the snow and then your front leg and then your rear leg going over it when you hit everything with both feet at the same time like that it's just going to be much more hard work on your legs which is why you can get really fatigued riding the slash so the long and short of it is that if you already have good technique you shouldn't have too many difficulties transferring those skills into slushy soft snow and as I mentioned, I'm not going to go too much into that. I'll put a bunch of links in the description down below on things like good posture, knee steering, carving, as I mentioned before, all of that stuff. You can check those videos out if you need to dial in your technique. But once you have that, what I want to talk about now is the one thing that's more unique to riding powder. And very quickly, before I get onto that, I just want to give all you guys a big thanks for this season. Whether you've just been watching my videos, you've been giving me a thumbs up, or especially those of you that have actually come out here to Outdoors in France and been having lessons with me. It's been such a busy, busy season. It's been awesome. And on that subject, thinking already about next winter, I'm not going to be teaching as much. I'm going to be taking not time off, but making sure I have time to make more videos because it's been a little bit of a struggle this season when I've been teaching until sort of 4.30 and then trying to make videos in the very last light of the day and when I've been teaching six, seven days a week. So going into next year, I'm not going to be as busy teaching, more time making videos. That does mean if you're interested in having lessons, I'm already starting to get booked up. January is almost sold out, so get in there quick if you want to do that. But now back on to riding slush. So we know we want that good turn shape. We want to be following the nose of your board. And yeah, I'm cheating a little bit today. If you have a big powder board with a massive nose, like this cool Dupra board that I've been riding, that's going to help because you want your nose to hit everything first. That essentially is lifting you up on the top of the slush and it's starting this process of what I call building a platform. As the nose of your board, let me get it on the snow here. As it starts to come across the piece and you're putting pressure through it, it's starting to compress. You can see it already a little bit there. Compress the snow and build this platform. Your front knee, when it gets really, really sort of thick porridgey slush, I go a little bit less weight on my front foot. This doesn't mean that I'm not using it. I'm still rolling my front foot over the board at every edge change, using my knee as a lever. The video for that, uh, that movement is down in the description below as well. Really important one you want to have in all your turns. I'm still using that front knee to make the edge change, but I'm not putting much pressure through my foot. The analogy I like to use, imagine you've got like a bug under your front foot. You don't want to squish it, but you don't want to release it either. I'm not sure what kind of hell that bug's living in, but you're trying to keep him there under your foot alive, not squashed and not released. So front foot's still working, bit of pressure through there. That's going to compress the snow even more. And then finally, by the time you've got to your back foot, you know, this point in the snow, my nose hits it there, my front foot hits it there. By the time my back foot has made it to that point, the board, your front foot, everything, it's done quite a good job of already compressing this snow. And now you get this sensation where you're not so much riding on your edge, but you're riding on this platform, this ledge that you've built up. And this is where being able to carve really helps you with riding slush. Because if you're already used to that sensation of getting the board rocketing across the slope like that, you're gonna stay on top of this ledge and it's gonna basically push back at you and give you grip. If in your normal turns on the piste, you're losing that grip with the back foot, the board's sliding away, 
then that's what we don't want to happen. You're gonna skip off that platform, off that ledge in the snow, and you're not gonna get that smooth, surfy feeling. So what I would do, I would just start off on like an easy-ish green slope, somewhere that you're not gonna have trouble making bigger turns and just get used to that feeling of following the nose and without putting in anything else, you'll start to get that feeling of building that ledge underneath your board. It feels really good. Don't rush the edge changes, don't flick the back end of the board out because you want to try and build that platform as soon as you can early in the turn. So now this is where we could start to be a little bit more aggressive with it. Once you've made the edge change, if you sink yourself down into a lower position, you can progressively push out against the board throughout the turn to compress that platform, lost my words for a minute there, to compress the snow underneath you a bit faster than say you were just being a bit more passive and just leaning into the, into the turn. And this is like a fine tuning kind of balancing act. If you kick your legs out too much, if you extend your legs too much throughout the turn, you're gonna break that platform and you're gonna fall through it. But if you get it right, it really compresses underneath you and that's when you get the sensation of it pushing back against you. Now, if you've watched some of my videos on up unweighted or down unweighted turns, also called high crossover or low cross under turns, don't need to worry too much about the terminology, that's basically about whether you're dropping down at the edge change or standing up at the edge change. They can both work in the slush, but a down unweighted turn allows you to be just slightly more aggressive because in a down unweighted turn, you're sinking down low as you cross your knees over the board, as you make your edge change. Straight away at the start of the turn, you can then push out, compress this snow underneath you, coming round, here, here I am at the end of my toe side turn, built that platform, built that ledge, and I just released the pressure, dropped down low, ready to start pushing out on my heels throughout the turn, building that platform. And if you do go too much, you can just style it out. It's quite fun actually to kick your back foot out sometimes and you make that big, big spray of slush. It feels a bit like you're making a turn on a wave. You kind of spray that slush away and no one knows that you messed up. All right, so have a watch of some more footage guys. But the key riding slush is once you have that smooth S shape, those carve like turns, it's pretty easy. And then you can start getting more aggressive with your vertical movements, getting low at the edge change and pushing out and round through the turn and getting that real fun snap and response from the board as it pushes into the platform, that ledge of snow that you've created. And it's easy to check. You can always look back up the slope and you'll see if you've left that nice clean line in the snow or it's a big fat dirty one. Okay, thank you for watching. Hope this helps you guys. I know it's the end of the season. A lot of you might already be finished, but if you are, save this for next time that you get some slushy conditions and get out there and enjoy it.